free body diagrams. Uh, this means uh, on each case, we'll be drawing only one free body diagram because uh, our object of interest is the box, okay? So, you have to know that um, in order for you to be very, very successful, you know, in drawing uh, free body diagrams, you have to follow those basic uh, steps we have learned before, okay? So, step number one, obviously, we are going to uh, analyze our system. So, let's start with our first case. In our first case here, we can see that we have this guy pulling this uh, box towards the right direction and this box is being pulled uh, on the surface that is rough, meaning that we will expect frictional force to exist between the surface and uh, the box, okay? That's step number one. Then step number two, we list, um, you know, contact forces that might be existing on our object of interest, which is uh, the box, okay? So let's list down those um, forces. So definitely you are going to have Fn, you are going to have Fw or Fg, you are going to have F fric, or which is frictional force, and uh, we are going to have applied force, okay? So now we are done. Then step number three, you know, uh, you draw a dot to represent your object of interest, okay? So we have our dot there. Then step four, you go to your system and ask yourself, is this motion happening on the straight horizontal surface or inclined surface? So in our case here, we can see that this motion is happening on a straight horizontal surface. So this means in step number four, you have to draw X axis line that will represent your surface, okay? So this is what you are going to do. So this is your x-axis plane that will actually represent your ground, okay? Or your surface, or the surface of the system, okay? Then uh, step number five, uh, that's where now you are going to draw arrows that represent all of those forces you have listed from step number two. So firstly, we are going to start with our FG or FW. So this is our FW from the object. Then we are going to have normal force. Okay, remember normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, then of course uh, we are going to have Applied. Oh. FW. So we are going to have F applied, then we are left with frictional force. Okay, so frictional force always opposes the motion. Okay, so in this case, this motion of uh, this box is towards the right direction, so which means uh, frictional force will you know point. Uh, towards uh, left direction because frictional force always uh, opposes the motion. So we are going to have frictional force. Then the last step of which most of the textbooks like to do is to erase your surface or your plane. Okay, then you'll be left with this beautiful uh, diagram which is your free body diagram, okay? Now, I have this interesting question for you. What will happen if F freak of frictional force equals to F applied or applied force? What will happen to the system again if F freak is greater than F applied? Okay, so these are just open questions like to check if you understand, you know, the relationship between frictional force and applied force. Okay, so just tell me your thoughts, what uh, will happen. Okay, then let's go to uh, case number two. 
Now you can see that this guy is pulling this box, but uh, this rope, it seems like it is at an angle with our imaginary x-axis, you know, a line, okay? So this means our applied force will be acting on this box at an angle, okay? You can name this angle uh, like theta or beta or alpha. You can see that our surface is rough, so something should click in your mind if you have rough surface. And again, um, I mean, this box will be moving to the right direction. So now first step, we are done with the analysis. Second step, we draw a dot to represent uh, the body of our interest. And um, step number three, we list all of the possible forces that might be acting on our box. So definitely we are going to have Fn, F applied, F freak because the surface is rough, and um, F W. Right, you can see that this nigga is even enjoying, you know, everything, forgetting that uh, he's applying laws of physics. Probably he's singing Ama Piano songs. Right, so um, we are going to draw our surface our plane okay it's horizontal plane then um, draw our forces so this would be your fw and up we are going to have f m but now our applied force is no longer um like acting on this object in a straight with four okay so it is at an angle like it is acting on this box at an angle so which means even here it should point this way at an angle with our imaginary x-axis line okay so we are done with that so this will be your f applied then let's go to our frictional always against the motion of the object so this will be your frictional force then you erase your surface then guess what tara this is what you get very beautiful free body diagram okay now uh since like you get an idea of how to draw this free body diagram so now this is what you're going to do okay so for each case from now onwards you are going to pause the video and try to come up with your own free body diagram then once you're done you'll play the video to check if we have the same free body diagrams okay then now uh, let's go to our third case so firstly we analyze our system we can see that now this box is being pushed towards the right direction on smooth surface so we assume that the surface is frictionless this means we are not going to experience or observe frictional force between the surface and the box okay and uh we are done with our analysis so um let's list all of the possible forces that might be uh you know acting upon this box so definitely we are going to have fn we are going to have fw we are going to have f apply because i mean this guy applied force on this box. That's why it is moving from uh, you know point A to point B. Okay, so here we are going to have F applied. Are we going to have frictional force? No. Why? Because uh, this box is moving along frictionless smooth surface. So now you draw your dot. Okay, let's draw it a little bit down here. You draw your dot, and the surface is straight horizontal which is frictionless, then your plane, and um, draw your force arrows. So this would be your F uh, W from the box, F N from the surface. Now, how are we going? How are we? Now, how are we going to uh, draw? The arrow that represents applied force, something like this, right? Oops, 
something like this right now this is not how we are going to draw it okay always bear in mind that arrows should point away from uh, the dot or from the dot that represent the object of your interest so this box is moving this way which means the direction of our applied force is this way okay to the right so you can draw your arrow that represent applied force like this so this is your fm or applied force then you erase your plane or horizontal plane this is what you get a beautiful free body diagram and once again when you draw free body diagrams make sure that you have ruler and pencil so that your diagrams can be neat and well presented So in this case, we have this guy, you know, with big belly, probably is eating too much, he's not, you know, interested in this herbal life thingy. So um, this guy is pulling this box uh, to the right, and uh, you can see that our applied force here, it is acting on this box at an angle with our imaginary x-axis plane, okay? So, and then you can see that here, our surface is smooth, uh, we'll assume that uh, there will be no friction existing or frictional force existing between uh, the plane or the surface and uh, our box, okay? So, uh, so we are going to list uh, possible forces that might be existing, you know, upon this box. So, definitely we'll have Fm, Fw, F apply, but at an angle, okay? So, uh, we are not going to have frictional force. So, let's draw our dot to represent our body, which is the box. Then, followed by the plane, which is horizontal plane. And now, we draw arrows that represent our forces. So, definitely, this will be your Fn, normal force, Fg, and your applied force, it is at an angle. So this will be your F applied, or your applied force, okay? Um, we are going to erase our surface. Plane. and this is our beautiful free body diagram okay you can label your angle as well then now let's go to this scenario so here you need to pay attention because things are different now you are going to learn some new things okay we are still going to use the same you know our steps to draw the free body diagram for this situation but things are going to be a little bit different Okay, firstly, you can see that our surface is no longer horizontal, it is inclined. Okay, so uh, this means the way we are going to draw our arrows to represent forces is going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to show you how. Okay, um, let's see, let's analyze our system. We'll be expected to draw free body diagram of this box, and this box is being pushed upwards. Okay, this box is being pushed upwards on rough surface, which means we'll assume that the frictional force will be existing between the surface and the box. Okay, we are done in terms of the analysis of our system. Then we are going to list all of the possible forces that will be acting on this box as it moves from point A to point B. So definitely we are going to have our Fn normal force, our Fw uh, applied force because it is being pushed. So and definitely 
frictional force, okay? So we are going to have four forces. Remember, when we are drawing free body diagrams, we don't normally indicate arrows for uh, component forces, okay? We have this important force that does affect the motion of this um, box and that force is quite special because we don't represent it here when we are drawing free body diagrams. We don't include it. But when we perform calculations, that force should be there. You exclude it, you are going to be screwed. Okay? And that's what this force is doing for the living, screwing people. Because it is just behind the scene watching you, you know, making mistakes so that you can be slaughtered. Okay? That's what it does for living. Okay? So that force, normally they call it FG parallel. Why are they calling it FG parallel? Because it is acting in parallel direction of this inclined surface. Okay? I will talk about this force in the next video. Okay, so let's continue. We are going to draw a dot that represents our box. Um, followed by our surface, but in this case, the surface is inclined, okay? And we are going to draw arrows that represent the forces that we have mentioned from step number two, okay? So always bear in mind that Fn is perpendicular to the surface. So we are going to start with our Fn. This is our normal force, okay? Then we go to FW. And this is where you should get me straight, okay? This is how your FW will look like, right? No. This is not how it will look like. This is not how you're supposed to draw an arrow that represents FW, okay? That's why I said on the inclined surface, there are a lot of special cases, okay? So, if our motion is on the inclined surface, our FW is always in parallel direction to the height of the ramp, okay? Or it is always in parallel direction to the side of the ramp that is opposite to the angle of the ramp. Okay, so this means your FW is going to be like this, the L. So this will be your FW. It should be parallel to the height of the ramp. You can see it is parallel to the height of the ramp or it is parallel to the side of the ramp that is in opposite direction of the angle of the ramp. Okay? So definitely, you are going to have applied force. Remember, your arrows should point away from the dot. Okay? And you are going to have frictional force. Frictional force. Okay? Then you erase your surface. So this is your F applied. So you raise your surface and ta-da, this is what you get. Okay? A very beautiful free body diagram. Remember to use a pencil and ruler to draw your diagrams, okay? Let's go to uh, this uh, scenario or this case. So we analyze our system. Uh, this box is pushed upwards or up the inclined surface and the surface is smooth. We assume that um, there will be no frictional force existing between the surface and the box, okay? 
of course you have applied force because it is being pushed upwards okay so we expect it to draw its free body diagram so let's list a step number two let's list all of the forces that are existing on this box okay so we are going to have fn definitely fw um f applied okay you can put one p we can write and f applied okay we are not going to have frictional force because the surface is smooth frictionless okay then uh, we are going to draw our dot to represent the body of our interest then followed by the surface the inclined plane inclined surface and obviously fn always perpendicular to the surface right then fw always in parallel direction to the height of the ray. Then definitely we are going to have applied force. Okay, you can raise your surface. And this is what you'll be left with. Right, very beautiful free body diagram. Always remember that there is this hidden force that is waiting for you to be slaughtered and this force or this special force we don't include it in our free body diagrams but when we are doing calculations particularly for Newton's second law or work energy theorem that force should be included and I'm going to talk about that force in the next video now we have this box sliding down the inclined surface and we are expected to draw its free body diagram. Um, you can see that the surface is smooth, uh, which means no frictional force existing between, you know, uh, the surface and the box. Okay. Um, so let's list all possible forces that might be existing on this box. So we are going to have Fn. We are going to have Fw. Uh, are we going to have frictional force? No. Are we going to have applied force? No, because this box was placed here and it started to you know slide down all right so let's draw the free body diagram so dot and um your fm fw always uh, parallel to the height of your ramp or inclined surface then when you are done you are going to erase your plane or inclined plane and this is what you'll be left with your beautiful free body diagram okay so now let's change the scenario and say this box is sliding down same direction but in this case the surface is rough and then you expect it to draw its free body diagram and the, and the biggest question is why is this box moving from point A to point B even though we are not pushing it what causes it to move from point A to point B so now I'm going to give you the opportunity uh, to draw its free body diagram Okay, just pause this video and draw its free body diagram. So this is the free body diagram of this situation or of this box.